Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Stress Reset. I'm James. This is my house. And this is where we're having class today. Um, hopefully, you'll stick around all the way through because we have a special visitor today, my dog, Bob Ross. He's asleep right over there right now. But he'll be around at the end of class to hopefully liven our um, <laughs> enliven our senses for the day. So uh, if you were around last week, you know that last week we covered some foundations and a lot of why stress reset. All I wanna leave us with, with concern from last week and bringing it into this week is the acknowledgement that how we know practices are working or are not working for us is all dependent upon you and dependent upon your ability to be aware of your nervous system state, your body, your emotions, your thoughts, your spirit, and how, um, and how you feel before the practice and after the practice. So none of these tools are special. <laughs> these are all generic stress reset tools. Some of them are really gonna work for you in particular, and some of them are gonna work for someone else. Some of them may not work for you, or maybe all of them do. This week, uh, our focus in both Move Lab and Stress Reset is senses or eyesight, taste, sound, kinesthetic sense. So that is how we are going to dive into our stress reset practices for today uh, and on Friday, to be honest. So we're gonna really tie into the senses. Why? Well, our body is a finely tuned sensory gathering machine. We are constantly looking and receiving vision stimulation, uh, sounds, touch, things we're tasting, things we're smelling. We are receiving information all the time from the environment. And our nervous system's job is to intake it, make sense of it, or organize it, and contextualize it. Is this thing safe or is it unsafe? And how does it determine if something is safe or unsafe? It has a lot to do with your history has a lot to do with people around you, has a lot to do with um, uh, the timing of things. So it's a very long-winded way of saying that different moments, different stimulus, different environments affects different people differently. So uh, you do not have trauma happen to you. You do not have stress happen to you. You do not have nervous disruption, nervous system disruption happen to you. It is happening inside of you. There are neutral events going on. Things are just happening and how you are receiving it, making sense of it, contextualizing it has all to do with whether it's a disruption or a delight. So, and a lot of that information is coming in, all of that information is coming in through the senses. So how do we reset it and re-regulate it? The senses. So that is what we're going to focus on today. So enough talk. Let's get right into the practices. First things first, sit, get comfortable. You can be on the floor. You can be in a chair. This is for you to decide when and where you take this in. Once you're there, I want you to uh, just take a little inventory. Some of the stuff we were doing last week. How do your feet feel? How do your hips feel? How does the trunk of your body, your arms, your head, how does your body feel? What's your digestion feel like? What's your breathing feel like? Giving you a moment, just be with that. That's all you gotta do right now. Just what's going on with my body? right now without the need to fix it or judge it, just what's happening. Then what's going on with your thoughts? Are you curious in here right now? Are you already defensive or thinking about something else? Where are your thoughts right now? And then how about your emotions or your spirit? Like, uh, are you in a good mood? Are you in a bad mood? Or is it optimistic, glass half full, pessimistic, glass half empty, somewhere in between? Do you have joy today? Are you more on the joy spectrum or more on the disappointment spectrum? Where are you 
emotionally today. Just have that in you. And where do you want to go today? What do you want that to feel like? What are the goals for today? So we're going to check in so that you know which of the tools are working best for you moment by moment. Okay, now we're going to start with vision. <clears throat> Why? Because for a moment, <laughs> for a moment, whether you want your eyes opened or closed, let's just appreciate our actual eyes, the eyeballs themselves as what they are. Your eyes are portions of your brain that have moved forward out of the cranial socket and forward facing the world. They are literal portions of your brain. They are brain cells that have become eyes. How amazing is that? So they are the closest and directly connected into the brain. So they, we are very strongly visually oriented creatures. Now, if you have a diminished sense of sight or you are visually impaired, don't worry, there's enough more information coming for you later, but the vast majority of us are visual creatures. So we're gonna start with the majority. We're gonna start with vision. So I want you to just look for something in the room right now, just whatever strikes your eyes. Like right in front of me are some flowers. So that's what I'm gonna use as my focal point. And I want you to effort and stare at whatever it is you're looking at. Just stare at it, stare through it. It's that Superman vision. And just notice your nervous system. Maybe type some words into the chat about how that makes you feel or just mentally catalog it. Now, I can't tell you how this is going to feel for you. I can share with you what my experience is. When I am staring at something, it's like I'm um, unaware of the rest of my surroundings. I'm blatantly staring. There's an effort. I feel closed in. I feel, uh, I'm not connected into my body. It's like I'm just the act of seeing. I'm, I'm staring at something. It's cool feeling. Then, in contrast, stomach fluttered, great. You know, just noticing. There's no right or wrong answers. It's just, what do you notice when you stare at something? Then instead, instead of staring at that thing, kind of soften your vision and, and appreciate your eyes for what they are. They are portions of your brain. You don't have to, it's not a muscle to work. <laughs> They're, the eyes, as long as your eyes are working to the best of their ability today, whether you want to effort for that vision, efforts to see that thing or soften and receive the image, receive the light bouncing off of those flowers or whatever's in your room, receive it and almost soft focus and allow your eyes to even look into the periphery a bit. It's like, oh, instead of staring at it, I'm receiving it and just notice how that makes you feel. Does your breathing change? Does anything in your body change? Does your thought process shift? Does your spirit or emotions shift? And just noticing the difference between those two. You can shift back and forth, staring <laughs> or receiving. I feel less calm than staring. Great, everyone is different. And uh, it could be when, when something feels less calm or more calm, it could just be new. It could be, oh, I'm not used to this. I don't actually have, um, uh, before we make judgments on it, let's just uh, neutrally catalog it. So how do you know you are less calm? What are the signals? coming up then? Or how do you know you're more calm? How do you know that in your body? And then as you're receiving it or staring, it's your choice now. Do you want to stare or do you want to receive and soft focus, kind of dilate open? Now allow your eyes to panoramically look to the left and panoramically look to the right. Now, I encourage you to resist the urge to do two things. Often when we do panoramic viewing, we'll go into a blink switch, meaning I blink and look left, forward, blink and look right, blink. Some version of that or staccatoed vision. What that looks like is I look left, 
then right there, then there, then there. Instead, think panoramic sweeping cinematography. It's like I'm just going to intake or paint the room with my vision from left to right and right to left. So it might look like if you're gonna watch, and it's soft and it's small. Now you may not be able to fully stare to the left and fully stare to the right. It may be smaller ranges of motion because we're not interested right now in how far can you stare. We're interested in panoramic sweeping vision because those eye muscles, those eye nerves are directly connected into some occipital or upper neck motor neurons. And all of that is distinguishing whether you are clenched or Ah, <sighs> relaxed. So we're kind of flossing and finessing the eyes. I'm gonna choose to soft focus and just kind of paint the room, right? Left. Now, if that is working well for you, you can stay there. You can go right and left, or you can run at a diagonal. I'm going to look up and to the left and down and to the right, up to the right, down to the left. It's really hard to do, <laughs> talk and do this thing at the same time. So I'm gonna be quiet and we are all gonna go either right or left, either soft focus or stare, panoramic or kind of at a diagonal, your choice. We're gonna do this for about 30 seconds. Just what did you notice? For me, I chose to do the diagonal thing. And I noticed that as I did that, it was like, uh, I felt constricted in the chest. Like uh, that for me would be an anxious signal. It's not a bad thing. I'm just very aware that I am playing with my nervous system, right? I'm not looking, I'm not goal orienting it. It's not like, oh, all I need right now is calmness, right? Instead I'm going, oh, look at that. I've got my nervous system's uh, attention. And so now I can go right and left and it's like, there's my nervous system. And then I can just kind of maybe pause somewhere along that zigzag or right and left. Maybe I just do a little breathing. And for me, I can soften and dilate open into that. You can stare, that works better for you. And then maybe move a little more with the vision. Good. And it's not about getting something right or wrong. It's about being aware of how that's affecting you and just noticing, right? Like, oh, I am more, more calm when I do this and I want to be more calm right now. How do I know I'm more calm? Well, my gut feels settled. My chest feels open. I feel very aware of my surroundings. My thoughts are calm. Or do I feel mobilized in sympathetic nervous system, ready to fight, flight, flee, um, and what does that feel like? Maybe I want to be there because there are, there's a time and a place for each, right? I'm worked up and I wanna calm. Well, what are your strategies for that? Also, sometimes we are caught up in thought loops, right? Uh, Monkey-minded, scatterbrained, uh, too many thoughts, too, too much on my mind. Pro tip, in order for your brain to get caught in a loop of thinking, your eyes have to move a lot, right? And you'll kind of notice it like kind of all over and fidgety eyed. If you stare at something, if you find yourself in that monkey minded kind of all over brain state and you just kind of narrow in, soft focus or stare, whatever is your preference there, you'll find that your brain has a harder time, mind has a harder time ping ponging all around because it requires the motor movement of the eyes. So time and a place. Do I need to intake my room or do I need that, that very detailed focused, right? 
Now we have a little more reasoning behind why the next exercise may or may not work for you, which is orientation. This is an oldie but a goodie. Orientation is I begin to look around the room and I objectively notice things in the room. This is one of my best ofs. This is one of my go-tos. And even, I mean, I'm, I'm a human being. So sometimes I forget to do my own practices. Sometimes I don't do these things. And I, when I get nervous or anxious or whatever, and I can remember, this is one that I turn to that calms my nervous system down uh, and resets things. So I'm looking around the room. I'm just objectively noticing. Objective viewing is going to sound like uh, plant, chair, pillow, rug, table, computer, light, light, window, art. It's things that you and I could notice in the same way. Not thing I love, thing I don't love, thing that needs cleaning, things that need organized. That's for you, that's subjective viewing. So just looking around the room. And how quickly or slowly you move is dependent upon your nervous system state and what is your preference. Do I stare at things or do I just intake? Is it panoramic? Is it zigzaggy? What do I need to do? Do I make it robust and quick or kind of slow? Which one feels better for your nervous system? Because you know your goals for today. So orient yourself, center yourself within your goals. Then just begin to notice something again that is beautiful. Soft focus or stare and allow yourself to um, intake and anchor into that thing that you really, really enjoy. I'm back to my flowers. And I notice that I'm um, settling because my breath just changed. So vision, lots and lots of um, different tools there, but some science and some how-tos and some ideas around that and how to reset your nervous system. Let's move on to another sense. Let's move on to natural noises. So many of you, when I asked last week about um, implicit practices, things that you just kind of naturally do when you're stressed, so many of you mentioned things along this line. I listen to music, I go outside, I listen to birds, wind chimes, all of the things. We even have it already in today's chat. I go outside. Now, there's a lot in going outside. There is just picking yourself up and moving to a separate location, which we covered last week. There is um, more vision, you know, it's like I'm getting natural light, I'm getting in beautiful, beautiful things, I'm getting in greenery and birds, and think about when you're outside and you watch birds, that's that panoramic, slow receiving tracking thing, cloud watching, wind blowing through trees, right, that soft focus, just receiving, I'm not staring at the birds, I'm receiving the outside, same is true for hearing. For the human ear, low-pitched and high-pitched noises tend to dysregulate us. Simply put, they are alarm calls. So think about a baby crying, that high-pitched sound, a siren going off, high-pitched sound, a dog barking, high-pitched sound. That means danger. There is something, there's a disruption out in the environment and my ear pricks to go, huh, what is, what is that thing? Low-pitched noises. Naturally, that would be um, the growling of an animal. That would be a stampede sound. That would be the sound of an earthquake or a tree cracking and falling. Those are low pitched sounds. In modern society, it would be the sound of like city traffic, subways. Um, it could even be furnaces going off. Those low pitched sounds mean to our nervous system that something is approaching. And it's not an alarm call. No one's noticed it yet. There isn't that sort of disruption. It's where, where is that sound coming from? It's that low pitched sound. Medium pitches, sounds of human voice, sounds of outside, sounds of regulation. Nature sounds, the sounds outdoors sort of have all of them, but the predominant wavelength there is that medium pitched sound. So you can do things like listen to your favorite instruments. Um, 
You could go outside and listen. You could have a conversation, podcast. That's why things like watching the news to fall asleep or listening to podcasts puts you to sleep at night uh, or can, depending on the content, can settle the nervous system because it's the sound of human voices and our nervous system loves the sound of a human voice. So how do we take those implicit things and make them explicit tools? Well, first one is gonna be sighing. So we're gonna get a twofer here. So I want you to take a deep inhale and sigh. <sighs> <sighs> right? So with sighing, A, I'm exaggerating my exhale, which from last week is a signal that I have time to breathe. Doesn't matter what kind of breathing I do, I have time to breathe. So it's a convincing of my nervous system that everything is okay. But I'm also listening to the sound of a human sound there. Now, sighing, could be a number of different things. And it's a language all into itself. Ready? Let's play for a moment. I want you to give me a sigh of relief or release. <sighs> a sigh of disappointment. <sighs> a sigh of, ex of exhaustion. <sighs> right? So there are all of these different meanings behind size. So begin to listen to how it is your sign. What is your body trying to inform you? So just take an inhale and sigh. What does it want to do? And can you play with that? Can you pick a, an adjective and sigh like that? Happy, sad, excited, tired, awake. Can it be that? And if all else fails, just sigh. Here's the thing. Once you start to do these practices, people around you are going to get really curious. To this day, my husband, every time I sigh, and I sigh all the time, is like, what's, what's wrong? <laughs> it's going, oh, what are you? I'm just doing my practice. So knowing why it works, how it works, sort of gives you the freedom to do the thing. I have a rule in my life. It's only silly to the ignorant. Because Move Lab, a lot of the stress reset stuff can appear really silly to people. Oh, why are you doing the shaking thing? Why are you rolling around on the ground like that? Why are you doing the sigh thing? Why, why are you skipping? Why are you doing all of these things? Well, it's because you, if you're asking me that question, you simply don't understand the science and the concepts behind it. Once you understand it, it's like, well, here's why. And I have the freedom now to do the thing. This is me giving you permission and advocating for you to sigh more in your life. And if you don't feel comfortable with that, or you just prefer this next thing, or you're ready for something else, you can hum. So take it and inhale and hum. Mm -hmm. It can be closed mouth or it can be open mouth. Uh, and you can go low with it. Mm -hmm. You can go high with it. You can, any of those choices, and you can shift. You can go, oh, I could see Bob Ross running out, that humming, sighing thing got to him. Now, same concept as the sign, only now with the humming, we're actually getting some kinesthetic, some felt sense, some rumbling and disruption going on. We have a nerve of awareness. We have a, a nerve of aliveness, of an experiential nerve. It's called your vagus nerve. We'll be, we touched on it last week. We'll be covering it more and more and more and more because it, it listens for the nervous system states we're in. It, um, it's the nerve that tells our brain like this is what's going on. Well, it interdigitates or holds hands with other nerves. The big one that we're dealing with here is the pharyngeal nerve or what allows us to talk and swallow. So when you hum, it vibrates around there and it's sort of that vagus nerve, that pharyngeal nerve goes, huh, what's that thing? It's like a massage for the nerve. So you can sigh or you can hum. All ancient traditions have 
humming or chanting or singing involved in prayer or uh, self-care work. There's a reason why we sing in the car to ourselves. Singing is another option. So if you feel free, you can just hum, you can sing, you can whistle, you can do all of that. The big one that I wanna leave you with in sound is there's a natural sound that um, resets our nervous system. And that's the sound of laughter. It can be your own laughter, it can be out and about. I want you to, even for a moment, close your eyes and just picture yourself with a best friend and you can hear their laugh. Or even better, one that I like, picture yourself outside of a playground and the sound of children's laughter, swing sets moving and children's laughter. And just notice in your own body how that lands with you. Or you can do your own laugh. And here's the thing about laughing. You can fake it until it happens for you. Now, I'm really good at laughing. So I'm going to get us started. And I want you to either just watch and listen and see how my laughter lands with you or join in with me. Now, I had a loud laugh. So if you're somewhere, you can dim this down if it's going to bother the people around you. So... <laughs> Just notice how that lands with you. The beautiful thing about laughing, especially if you're laughing with someone, is that your facial muscles have to um, move and morph and uh, uh, share that experience with the other people because our face, especially the top of our face, so eyes, forehead, um, expresses joy, resilience, laughter, connection. So thinking about how all of those sounds can sort of um, play in to caretaking. Now with that, let's continue on. Sense of touch. Ready? First thing I want you to do is take your hands and clench. And just notice how just a clenched hands affects your nervous system. And then instead, just kind of relax your hands, open them up. You might even wanna go palms up or lay them down on your lap, whatever the case may be. And then you can clench again. Maybe this time you even wanna kind of clench your shoulders and squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then relax, dilate open. It's that same thing that we did with the vision. I stare and I contract or I dilate open and release. Now you can continue on with the upper body or maybe clench your leg muscles. Like you're gonna um, flex your quads, your hamstrings, you can squeeze your toes, you can squeeze your legs together, whatever the case may be. And just notice how that changes your awareness of your body, of your mindset, and your spirit or your emotions. And then instead, dilate and relax open. Now, it's going to land differently for all of us, right? Because for some of us, it's like clenching something feels awkward, feels unpleasant. For some of us, clenching and holding on tight feels very normal because of previous trauma, previous stress, body inherited or learned body postures, right? And it feels weird to do the other thing. One isn't more correct than the other. It's just, how does it make you feel? How are you going to navigate that felt sense? right? So those are practices. You can squeeze and release, squeeze and release. You can squeeze your whole body and then release. Because here's the thing, sometimes when we get stuck in a pattern of contraction and holding, we don't even know what it's like to not brace. We don't even realize we're doing it, right? How many times have you yourself been like, notice that your shoulders, like you didn't, you weren't aware that you were doing this. <laughs> or you see someone, you're like, oh, are you tense or tight? They're like this, like, uh-uh, no. They're not even aware anymore of what is going on. Then continuing on, take a hand, put it on your arm, and just kind of stroke your arm. And notice, does that feel pleasant? Or do you prefer something like this? And if the arm doesn't work for you, you can do the pace or this. You can do the chest or this. Do I like touch and stroke or do I like tapping? 
once you know, do I like soft touch and stroke or firm? Or soft? Because again, I'm just orienting myself to what feels good. How do I like to be touched? Because again, as we covered last week, I could be in a Zoom meeting doing this, and you have no idea that underneath the camera, I'm doing this. I can do the leg thing. Think about implicitly, what do we do? Receive news. Right? We immediately, implicitly, accidentally go into a touch thing. So how can we turn that into a tool? How can your sight, your sound, your touch become tools to orient ourselves or to reset our nervous system states? Now, take a little inventory. How do you feel? What has shifted? What worked for you? What didn't work for you today? What did you learn? What are you going to take with you? Because again, these are practices. This is not something to show up once and go, got it, learned it. Because that's what happens so many times in this. Got it, learned it, loved it. Great. I feel better. On to the next thing. And then two, three weeks from now, two months from now, you're going to be really dysregulated and go, God, what was that thing that, that did? How did I breathe again? What is? What do I look at? I got to look for the flowers. I don't have the flowers right now. Whatever it is, right? What are the? Uh, what are you extracting from the experience? Now, I hope you stick with it. Hope you play with this because on Friday we're going to be back, and I'm going to introduce sort of a um, body to brain experience with a lot of this stuff. So play with the sight, play with the sound, play with the touch, and we're going to kick it up a notch on Friday. I'll stick around for some questions. I dropped my email in there. It's james at jamescrater.com. You can always email me afterwards. This is the work I love. So if something, if you need more personal support or you discovered something today that confuses you, reach out. So thank you so much. Thank you, James. And you did promise that we were going to see Bob oh, Ross at the end. <laughs> he, he went into the There he is. Come on, baby. I realized too, um, Oh, I'll tell you in a minute. Oh, look at Bob Ross. Oh my gosh, you are so adorable. Now that is, that's a stress reset right there. <laughs> he is so well, it's because he's, it's because uh, if we were having, there it is. If we were having this class at like nine in the morning, this would not be a stress, this would be a stress or, but because we hit it during, um, he is getting big. He is, well, he had his, he's fully vaccinated now. He had his first vet appointment uh, last week and he was 19 pounds. So he is big and he starts puppy training on December 5th. So oh, wow. we're all very excited because he's a handful. Oh, yes. He's so cute. Uh oh, either I'm frozen or you're frozen, Alicia. It's Alicia. I like to have a lot of weight, a lot of weight on me. So like I sleep with weighted blankets or pillows and uh -huh. that seems to help, um, you know, calm my stress or calm my anxiety. But I didn't realize like as a child that that's what I was doing. Right. Until I started learning about this stuff. Yeah. I, um, I like, you know, and everyone, and again, everybody's different. So I'm someone who prefers weight on me when I sleep. And my husband is the, my husband and my mom, my sister and I are like this. And my husband and my mom are the exact opposite. They're the people who like maybe a sheet on them or like nothing on top of them as they sleep. And I'm someone who is like, even if it's hot inside, I've got a blanket over me, Yeah, but I don't like, I tried the weighted blankets and I don't like them because what I noticed is that um, I'm also a mover when I sleep and mm -hmm. when I would move, it would like start to slide off the bed oh, right. and it would wake me up because it feels like a human like pulling, like pulling off the bed yeah. with that <laughs> amount of weight. 
So I just, I just use like a down comforter and just like a- That's what I have. I have the down and then I just have the big pillows and I'll stack them on top of me. I even have, I put one across my forehead and my eyes and everyone makes fun of me. My husband, my friends, anyone, my sisters, they're like, you're so weird. I'm like- we could slumber party together because yeah, literally totally. when I sleep, it's like you see like this. Oh, same. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. And thank you for sharing, Bob Ross. Yes. Um, we will be here tomorrow, like I said, for uh, Move Lab and, of course, on Friday, too. And I'm really looking forward to diving deeper into this stuff. It's just great stuff. Were there any questions? I actually no, I just I'm going back. Um, we did, when I look, uh, my bright window is in the view and my eyes out in the dark room, more calm in the room. Got it. Yeah, a lot of yeah everyone is just so different, right? So that's why these tools, it's which tool do you need? Right. Yes, we are going to get these uh, recordings posted. I just don't have um, a specific date for you. We do have the first two blocks of classes already posted from last summer, um, well, last spring and last summer. They're on our YouTube page, Western Health Advantage, at the playlist. Uh, but this particular block, I don't have a date for you yet, but we'll let you know as soon as we do. So. Cool. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, James. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Have Bye, everybody. Bye.